ご覧のスポンサーの提供でお送りします。What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the channel. It is me, of course, your buddy Osaga G here. And today, we're gonna be reviewing this new Netflix original animated series called Love, Death and Robots, which came out today. And this is an anthology series consisting of 18 different short stories, which are written and done by different studios around the world. And there's different types of art styles. Some of them are CGI, which is the most prominent theme through、uh, the series. And then there's a lot of 3D rotoscoping.、Uh, there's 2D, there's combination of 2D and 3D. Then there's graphics that kind of look like game graphics. There are all of these different types of styles. And there's a lot of value to be watching this show. Purely for the art. None of the episodes looked bad. I think the art styles were really nice and the aesthetics were truly there. But it's not free of politics because it's obviously done around the world. People have shoehorned their political ideas, whatever it's feminism, white males are bad, males are bad, males are rapists, climate change,、uh, moral fagging, anti nationalism, promotion of military industry complex, LGBT themes, humanism, and all of this kind of mumbo jumbo political ideas, mostly from the left, are integrated into this.、Uh, some of the episodes, not all of them. And since there are so many episodes, I won't be going over explaining、uh, all of them and explaining you the premise, but I'm going to be saying that all of them, from an artistic point of view, were very well executed. Is there a wine clip that could have been adapted into a whole series in Netflix? That is a possibility that Netflix might be looking into. I don't think that were, there were purely a one specific episode that kind of got me sold on that this could be expanded to a more bigger story. I mean, there were a couple, and we're going to be talking about those first. So, the first episode is Asani's Edge, which is this sort of a feminist,、um, anti male type of a situation where people are fighting on underground with these sort of a beast things. Um, I didn't like this episode that much outside from the fights, which were very, very good. And for one thing I did forget to mention there will be a lot of sexuality, a lot of nakedness. You will be starting to see a lot of pussy, a lot of cocks, a lot of boobs,、uh, a lot of splatter also. It's a very.、Um, Adult、uh, type of an animation, and Netflix is trying to kind of push the boundaries with the sex and also the violence that you can show. And they're kind of trying to grow this new type of a movement for adult animation. And I think this series altogether is a very good push for it. So I, 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 I fundamentally think that it's a good thing that these t y p e of shows exist, and maybe there will be appreciation. Um, and you know, it's kind of like similar to Animatrix in a lot of、uh, also in other aspects because there are always aspects of love, death, and robots almost included in some of the episodes. Not all of them are sci fi, but they kind of all fall into the same category. So, The Sunny's Edge, I, I didn't care about it. The Tree Robots is just sort of a comedic type of thing where tree robots go into sightseeing on Earth and look at like human culture and yada yada yada. This was actually pretty good.、Um, it was very beautiful to look at, and some of the jokes were good. The third episode is called The Witness. This is,、um, I won't ruin the story for you, but I think I, I didn't like this one too much. I think it was a bit too maybe sexual for my own liking.、Um, then was the fourth episode called Suits, which is about farmers like fighting these Zerks or something like these alien creatures. This is one of those episodes that I actually liked, and I thought that this could be. Very easily to translate it into a full series. I think there's actually a bit of a concept here that could be manifested into like a whole, whole movie or a whole series. The world seemed kind of interesting.、Uh, Sucker of Souls is、um, only 2D animation, pretty much. Well, not only, but only like classical 2D animation on this bunch. And this is about vampires, basically, or the Dracula. And This was also kind of semi interesting. Could it be turned into a full series? It's possible. I, I like that one. I think it's also out, out of the all series, it doesn't fit into the bunch because I mean, it has something to do with death, but it doesn't have anything with, to do with sci fi. And then there's this yogurt episode, When the Yogurt 2. This is the sixth episode. This was.、Um, Yeah, this was actually kind of interesting and I liked it because it was kind of 
didn't have any political leanings to it. I think it was a very neutral type of take on a very interesting concept, which was kind of ridiculous. And stylistically, also, it's very different from the rest of them. This was very good also. And then there's the Beyond the Aquila Rift. This is the most sexual episode. This also has a very CGI that looks very, very real to me. And it had reminded me of this fucking um, <laughs> hentai fucking movie. I think it's called Kunoitsi or something like that. And there was something kind of similar to that in this one. And you will know what I mean when you get to the end. Um, then comes perhaps the best whole episode in the series. There were some aspects that I didn't like about it. Like, you know, okay, white males are rapists or something. Good Hunting is a story about like this sort of a... Um, it's not a mecha world. It's more of a... Um, what's the word? Steampunk type of a world of Hong Kong where there are these creatures who transform into these, like, shape-shifting hulijing, they are called. I don't know what that translates to, but I think they're, like, foxes of sorts, and they are essentially, like, a succubus of sorts. And this was actually very, very fine-looking. I love the aesthetics about it. There was decent music, and the whole concept and the premise of the story was really, really good, and this could be adapted into a full story. This kind of reminded me of Legend of Korra from the steampunk perspectives, but it was a lot more mature in that sense and i think this could be something that i would love to see a full movie of or like a full story i think this was probably yeah ultimately the best episode if you're going to be watching one of them i think good hunting is probably the best then is the dump um that was kind of like whatever I, I didn't have any strong feelings about it it wasn't very political either it was kind of random to be honest in terms of its premise then there was the shapeshifters about werewolves serving in um, the armies. This was obviously about military industry complex because you had to shoe shoehorn American troops and Taliban. Very political context there. Um, we know that Netflix is probably getting money from the deep state to promote these type of military shows, which they've been pushing quite a lot. If you go to the front page of um netflix right now there's shows like triple frontier and stuff like that and you know there's many military shows that they've been pushing out recently and i don't i didn't like that idea of the setting um of this this shapeshifters one but that it could work as a, like a whole series um if it was just turned into outside from the military industry complex bullshit maybe in a different country like uk or russia i don't know then there's the helping hand this was I don't know, this was kind of whatever, to be honest, to be meh, very meh. Uh, Fish Night, very, very good. This is top three. Artistically, this is number one out of all the series. And this was very aesthetic, very beautiful. The ending was so fucking dumb, though. Very fucking dumb. It just didn't make any fucking sense to me, to be honest. It just had to, like, fit into the fucking love, death, and robots type of thing, I guess. And also, artistically, it's very distinguishable from the others. It kind of reminds me of this new Broken Sword type of art style, actually. And I, I liked it. This was very, very good. It's not something that could work on a movie or a TV show, perhaps. Maybe it could. Maybe it could be done as a movie. But I liked it. This was perfect story to be told on a short story. Very good. Then you had Lucky 13, another CGI one. Very impressive from certain aspects. I liked it. It was okay, but... It, it didn't like, wasn't like super unique or something that I would probably remember from ages on. Then is the another uh, that I consider in the top through Zima Blue. This was very beautiful looking 2D animation, and it had a very interesting artistic message, which was not political. And Zima Blue kind of like shows the other, and Fish Knight also shows that you can do fucking art and animation without fagging your own political ideas and brainwashing children to your shit. I fundamentally like that aspects of this uh, Zima Blue. This is also Zima Blue, Fish Knight, and uh, Good Hunting are the top three. Those three I really recommend everybody to watch. And, oh yeah, I actually forgot the next one, Blind Spot. Really fucking good, actually, as an action thing. This is very short, it's only eight minutes. But this is actually something that I would love to see a series out of. I think it reminds me of that Hot Wheels series, which was like some... I don't. I think it was Hot Wheels, which is about these cars and like androids and stuff like that and guns and everything. This was very, very interesting to be honest. Um, as a concept, uh, this very cyberpunk type of thing with like race cars, kind of not Mad Max say, but very scientific one. So this could be working as a whole series. So 
that would be my serialization choice along with good hunting out of the all that I in the list. And moving on to the last tree, we had Ice Age, which was actually the only one that used real actors. And the concept was kind of cool, beautiful. Once again, this didn't need any political propaganda to be put on to tell a great story, tell a mini story. I like this very much. And then we have alternate histories. Artistically, this was kind of cool, but it was very, very propaganda heavy, very propaganda heavy. And I didn't like that altogether. I mean, the, the left are obsessed, absolutely obsessed about talking Hitler and the Nazis all the time. You can't fucking watch a single show today where Nazis or Hitler is not even mentioned once in the fucking show. It's really annoying. I don't want to like, why do we have to talk about a guy who died almost 100 years ago? It's like, what the fuck are we talking about this still to this day? Um, and then the last one, the secret war. Um, this was very interesting concept, very, very detailed uh, CGI. And I think this could also survive as a whole series or a whole movie. I think there's a lot to be more explored uh, with the plot and the story. It could be rehashed a bit in cer certain aspects, but I kind of liked it taking place in the World War II. And then there are these fucking dark creatures manifesting in Russia. So Russia is like fighting in the in the Eastern Front while it's fighting these, you know, fucking demons inside of the country. So that was very interesting to me, to be honest. And uh, it kind of reminds me a bit of, not Stalker, it reminds me a bit of Metro actually. And also the... Stalker and uh, what's Chernobyl? I don't remember that one, but I think this this is also one that could work as a whole movie or a whole series. And I'm kind of hoping that Netflix would kind of consider transforming some of those um, shorts to in the full series. I think that should be explored as an idea. But overall, I mean, outside from to finalize my thoughts, Good Hunting, Fish Night. And Zima Blue were really, really good and blind spot. And I think these could have been, these are the ones that I recommend everybody to watch. And I'm not like super, super excited of any of them. Like, I wouldn't be like too mad if they didn't adapt anything to a full film or full series. That's fine. But I think there is potential with good hunting, especially. And maybe that will happen because I don't think those CGI's will happen because I, to my understanding, it's still fucking expensive to do even like 15 minutes of film like that. But, you know, overall, interesting experience. I've never been a very big fan of anthology in general. I like story-based things and you can't tell a great story in 15 minutes just as the way it is. And because of that, it's just not really my thing. It was still enjoyable to some aspects, at least some of these episodes. But I think that there is uh, bigger stories to be told with some of these, perhaps in the future. But until then, I will see you guys next time. Make sure to subscribe, like the channel, and um, comment below. Um